Hi, everyone, and thank you for tuning in. You're listening to episode three of Let's Talk ETC. I'm your host, Carlo V, along with my co-host, Dr. Christian Severino. Hello. What's going on, Christian? Uh, I want to thank the ETC devs, users, community members, uh, and investors for another great week. Uh, you know, a lot going on this week, accomplished a lot, still a lot more to accomplish, but we're really excited. Uh, the ETC newsletter will be in the description of the show posted on YouTube if you guys want to check that out. Uh, there's a lot of great stuff in there this week. You know, we have a monetary policy update from Snaproll, kind of uh, pushing forward kind of some of those ideas and a little bit more discussion that's been happening in the community. Uh, we also have a really interesting proof of work, proof of stake hybrid paper released by Virginia Commonwealth University. So check that out if you get a chance. Um, you know, however, what I really want to discuss with everyone tonight is in reference to the report IOHK. Uh, so thank you, IOHK, for that. Thank you, Charles. Thank you, IOHK team, everybody out there who worked on that. Um, so they just released a report breaking down the Dash governance uh, treasury model that they have. Uh, for those of you who don't know, Dash is another blockchain cryptocurrency. You guys can check it out on CoinMarketCap uh, somewhere around there if you want to check that out. So it, um, the report details some of the pros, cons, and other stuff that they have going on with that governance treasury model. It's a really interesting piece that I suggest you guys check out if you get a chance. Uh, thankfully, tonight we have a really great Dash community member with us and host of Cryptoholics joining us tonight, special guest Bill Cassidy. How are you doing, Bill? What's going on? What's up? What's I'm up, doing great. Man? Thank you for having me. Yeah. So he's done a lot of great work with the Dash community for everybody who's listening. Um, so Bill, uh, how'd you get into blockchain? You know, what what first got you interested in this whole blockchain thing? You know, we've all got our story on how we, you know, got in here and how how we got started. So I was just wondering how you got started. Right. right. So it was it was around the end of 2013 when I first got into crypto. I think the Bitcoin price was exploding and I had heard about Bitcoin before, but I just, I wasn't really, I didn't have the technical know-how to understand how it worked mm -hmm. or to get into it. <clears throat> and at this point it was pretty clear that I wasn't going to be doing any Bitcoin mining and I didn't want to purchase mm -hmm. any Bitcoin for $1,200. So I just started looking for other projects and, uh, interesting. I found, yeah, I found Ripple, <laughs> and okay. the thing that drew, the thing that drove me to Ripple is uh, they were doing this thing called the World Community Grid Initiative, and basically oh. anybody could use their computing power to process this data that the World Community Grid provided. And so, if you had a stronger computer, you could process more data. And Ripple Labs, uh, they set up a team on this World Community Grid thing, and they were uh, rewarding users for pointing their computing power at this grid. And so I, I was doing that, I was doing that for a few months and I was earning some XRP and I got a bunch of my friends involved and hmm. uh, Ripple ended that initiative. And I was kinda, I kinda realized how how lame Ripple was <laughs> at, that <laughs> point, at that point too. So I got out of Ripple and I started looking for other projects and uh, I found Darkcoin and I really, I jumped right in and yeah, I started so volunteering my time. That's way back before yeah, was, the rebrand. <laughs> yeah, this was around March 2014 when I when I joined the Dark Coin community, and uh, I jumped right in like I was saying, and I just I just started volunteering my time and I started mm -hmm. making uh, like tutorial videos and writing guides. I think I did 25 help videos in total, and they're actually still up there on the Dash YouTube channel. Uh, I wrote a few guides and I started doing my podcasting for Dash. Actually, I started my first podcast for Dark Coin. It was called the, the Daily Dose of Dark. And I did 55 episodes in a row, 55 wow. days in a row. <laughs> and I, I ended up getting shingles, <laughs> literally. So I quit that. And holy cow. Uh, yeah, around eight months ago, I realized that Dash didn't have a, a public Slack. You know, and I, I had pushed them to open one and they never really wanted to. So I just took it upon myself to open a Dash Slack and I started inviting all the community members and the Slack grew to about 900 people in <laughs> eight months or seven months or so. And yeah, I gotta say yeah. Slack's pretty awesome. Yeah, Slack's pretty cool. Uh, 
you know, my involvement with Dasha is kind of like, <clears throat> I, I'm very vocal. You know, I'm, I'm outspoken and I'm, I'm not afraid to say what's on my mind. And I'm not Absolutely. afraid to say if I think something's wrong or, you know. And so I, <clears throat> the Dash core team, they, there's a little bit of discontent with the Slack because uh, they realized that we were actually gaining power. You know, <laughs> and they saw this and they started labeling me actually. Uh, the, the community and some of the core members, they labeled me like a troll. My, my own community that I was a part yeah. of, they, they were calling me a troll. And, uh, they even made a meme. They called us, me and my cohorts, they, they claimed that there was only five of us that would uh, <laughs> say these things, these outspoken things. And they called us the five guys. <laughs> Someone even made a, one of those Hitler videos about it. It's pretty funny. I'll, I'll send you guys a link here. Yeah, you can, oh, you can share it. <laughs> Wait, I gotta, sure, yeah. I got so um, you may have heard everybody, some people, I don't know about everybody, but Zcash, people are talking about that. And so privacy, we talked on, on the last show how that's uh, like the, the next flavor of the month. And so I was just curious, since you've been involved with a coin, an altcoin that uh, has privacy, what that was like. Um, uh, what I mean by that is did you, like new people or when you would explain to people would they go oh privacy wow you guys must all be drug dealers that's bad <laughs> we, i was just curious the social the acceptance of how how that played out can you say something um, i don't i don't think it was necessarily so much the the technology that scared people but when the name was dark coin that huh. was definitely a big turn off to people and i had when we were doing the rebranding from dark coin to dash um, I actually emailed Evan Duffield, the lead developer for Dash, asking him, like, because I was against it at first. And I was like, why are you doing this, man? Like, this is not a good idea. Like, I don't think you should be doing this. And he, his response to me was that uh, they were actually being investigated by Europool or whatever. So mm -hmm. there, there were some <laughs> investigations going on. And, yeah, you know, it does have, like, a negative connotation to it, which kind of sucks because <laughs> – that's what drove me to, to Dash was the privacy aspect. Mm -hmm. But to be honest, like in my, in my previous interview, I had uh, Ricardo Spagni and uh, Gary Lee from Zcoin and Ricardo from Monero. And uh, one, of the, one of the points we made was that like if- Great show, if, by the way, I, I listened to that. Thank you. Uh, yeah. if, 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 the private, if the privacy is not enabled by default, and nobody's going to use it. And that's the truth. I, I was with Dash for two years, and I literally probably used the mixing, uh, the mixing technology. It's called DarkSend. I used it three times, two or three well, times. You know, I actually have a, a, a comment about that. I, I was listening, and I, I agree to, to some extent. I think if you have something like Monero that's inherently um, you know, private, no matter what you do, uh, you're obviously going to have a lot more private transactions because a hundred percent of them will be, but let's just say hypothetically dash or another crypto or blockchain became an absolute development powerhouse. And it was, you know, in every country all over the world and it had like, you know, a 600 billion market cap or something. Um, so I think as, as a, a community grows, as the use of something grows, so will the community that wants to use it for something anonymously um, yeah. you know, naturally. You know, it, it's just, I, I think if you guys uh, keep keep growing, there will be a user base that uses it for that sort of thing, potentially. Um, yeah. That's just yeah. kind of kind of my thoughts on it. I could be way off base because there's a lot that I don't know, obviously. Now, Bill, but, uh, I don't know what I was thinking. I had a question for Bill. So are you saying that just by taking the word dark out of the name, all of a sudden now you uh, privacy is okay and nobody is going to investigate you anymore is that uh not, nece not necessarily i mean it, i think they could investigate you either way especially if they they know about the technology i just i think the dark was just yeah just Some bringing unwanted attention that we didn't need you know I, okay. think 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 about it christian it's um you know it's regulators in an office somewhere who knows where sometimes a rebrand is all you need to just get out of the radar if 
you know, blockchain is barely on the radar or okay. somewhat on the radar. You know, I also think got, that yeah, I think Dash rebranded also not only because of that, but they have like a plan to do more than just privacy. And to be honest, right. my my belief is that they're moving away from privacy. Like I I feel like in one to two years, Dash isn't even gonna be pushing their their privacy technology. Yeah, I, I think I, I think it wouldn't be something they. It looks like it's not gonna be something they push, but it'll just be a useful feature that say, you know, less than ten percent of the users use, but it's their choice to use it. I guess. Yeah. If yeah. they have it on at all. For sure. Um, <laughs> now, Bill, but, I had another question. Can you, uh, can you say something about how the the privacy works, the mixing, what you, you to for not to get too uh, technical, but can you somehow for people that don't know, can you say something about that? Right. So it's it's kind of a, it's based off CoinJoin, but it's it's a it's a stripped down version of CoinJoin, and apparently they've improved the coin join like immensely and I'm not a developer. Yeah. So I can't, I, I can only say what I've been told. I can't actually look at this code and vet it and make sure that that's true, you know? Mm -hmm. um, but basically you just click a button in the wallet in the QT wallet and it says start dark send mixing. And <clears throat> what, what you're doing is you're basically mixing your coins like mm -hmm. With yeah. other users and they're all like specific uh denominations of like 0 0.01 0 0.1 1 10 and then 100 and that's about as techn technical as, as as i can get <laughs> no I, I think i get it um what are you what do you have for is it is it like tor that the, the the reason everybody doesn't do it or it's not the default is because it, it slows it down transactions it is, it's it takes too long. So you can't, you can't send a private transaction without mixing, right? So you have to mix your coins before you can send a private transaction. Okay. So you mix your coins and like, if you do mixing right now, let's say you mix a thousand dash, right? Mm -hmm. If you mix a thousand dash, that's literally going to take like 24 hours. And so, you know, yeah, like if you don't want to spend them right away, that, that's fine. You know, you're not going to spend them right away or anything. You can do some mixing and have them for later. But in today's day and age, people people want instant. You know, people want like, immediacy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Understood. So if you had a if you had a choice to use a mixer or something that's just default defaulted on privacy, mm -hmm. you know, I feel more people are going to choose the default privacy method. Agreed. Yeah, I see. So um, I guess that's more like dark coin past. So let's talk about, uh, you know, dash current, dash future type stuff. Um, yeah. Since, uh, uh, you know, I, I think it was a great rebrand, by the way. Um, yeah. I, so, think it, I think in the end it worked out overall. Yeah, I, I agree. So, so what do you have going on uh, currently? And, you know, uh, the ETC community was talking, you know, when this whole Ethereum Classic thing first started, Dash came up a lot as, as an interesting governance and treasury model and, IOHK right. has looked into right. it. What uh, what do you guys have going on currently as far as different proposals and what do you uh, maybe have planned in the future? What what are some of your thoughts? <laughs> well, honestly, like to tell you the truth, this this happened just pretty recently. Um, like kind of going through a breakup with the Dash community. So mm -hmm. at at this specific time and moment, <laughs> uh, I really could not tell you exactly what's going on. It's been about about two months since uh, I've done my breakup with Dash, and I'll give yeah. you a little a little background on that. It's just I was feeling um, I volunteered a lot of time to this project in two years, you know, and uh -huh. I went to the D10E event in San Francisco. I I demoed the soda machine. I paid for my own ticket. I paid for my own hotel room. I was never offered any kind of money or compensation for anything. And I was just kind of feeling really underappreciated by the Dash core team and actually the Dash community too. And yeah, I, I wasn't I really get, I wasn't getting the recognition I deserved. So two months ago, I sold all my Dash and converted about 80% of my holdings into Bitcoin. And I put the rest into other projects that I believe in. <laughs> cool. So yeah, I guess um, I didn't necessarily mean what do you have going on in uh, Dash specifically, but I, I know um, you're, you know, you've been in blockchain for a long time. I know you you're, 
involved in a lot of things. You've got a lot of great community members that you're in touch with and speaking with frequently. So uh, what do you see currently that's cool? What do you think that's cool in the future and stuff like that? <laughs> right. So I actually have two projects that I'm working on. And I think they're really cool. <laughs> so uh, I'll yeah. go ahead and pl- I'll go ahead and plug those real fast. And go the thing it. is, is this whole dash scenario that I just explained. This kind of ties into what I'm working on. So the dash Absolutely. slack that I the dash slack that I created uh, since I was feeling underappreciated, I pivoted that into a crypto chat room, and I named it Crypto Chat. And so uh, basically, we are moving away from Slack. Um, in general, I mean, I'm still using Slack, but we're now using a platform called Riot, and it's built on uh, the the framework called Matrix, matrix.org, mm-hmm. and uh, it's very similar to um, Slack, but it's it's open source, and we can run it on our own server, so we don't need to uh, trust Slack or you know rely on Slack and right. Uh, we can build bridges between uh, crypto chat between the channels on on my chat room and other slack so for instance i did that with uh with you guys we built a, a bridge between the ethereum classic slack we we built a channel in there and we called it crypto chat and then we built a bridge from there over to my crypto chat room so now yeah. anybody that talks in that ethereum classic channel uh you can see that over in the crypto chat channel and vice versa as well. Nice. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks for help setting that up by the way. Yeah, for sure. So crypto chats kind of my main uh, project and I have a few partners working on that with me. And then my other project is Cryptoholics, and uh, it's basically my, my podcast that I'm working on right now. I'm trying to grow it into a little bit more. Uh, for instance, I, I posted your guys's last podcast on there, a link to it and, I'm trying to just get all types of different uh, different content on there from other people. So absolutely, not, yeah. The uh, uh, the, the interview ahead. you did with with Charles was was really good. Um, a lot of great reception yeah, that, on that one. That was a big hit. I I feel like Charles uh, had that on his chest, and he was just mm-hmm. ready to let loose with it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was that was a good one. So, so um, can I have yes. a question for Bill. Um, yeah, for so sure. you you're obviously very dedicated and very passionate. Uh, so what was it uh, initially and currently that drove that passion and level of commitment to, like you said, you, you paid for the plane ticket to, to go and, and demo something and, and all the effort that you did? You know, I, I never really worried about the money or anything. I don't, I'm not like, I didn't want money back. Mm-hmm. I think my passion came from, I guess, building, building a reputation, really. I, I, for two years, you know, you join this industry as a new guy and it's like, I, you don't even want to make a comment on a Reddit post, you know, <laughs> <laughs> you're going to get yelled at or you're going to get called stupid or whatever. So I think at first my goal was to just build my reputation and okay. uh, get some recognition. Mm-hmm. And that's, I was, it, it was working for a while, you know, and mm-hmm. I was meeting a lot of people and so it wasn't like you, I, I was guessing that you were going to say you had a, a mission to, to give the world privacy or something like that. You know, you know I'm, a, I'm a libertarian and uh-huh. I do believe in freedom and privacy. Uh-huh. Uh, I just I hate pushing like my agenda on people. Uh-huh. <laughs> I, I don't mind showing you or like revealing some kind of technology to you that could possibly help you. Mm-hmm. But I, I've learned that trying to change people's minds or trying to change people's ways. It's almost impossible. (laughs) Mm -hmm. So I, I wasn't, I'm not here to like change the world or. (laughs) (laughs) I know what you mean. Well, in in some ways you, you are, maybe you you don't realize it, but this movement blockchain is is still so early. Um, Even if you feel like you were late to the party, be joining it in 2013 in the grand scheme of it, this is like uh, internet 19, Maybe not even maybe not even 1990. This could be like internet <laughs> protocol days. This could be like uh, 80s. I, I don't even know right, what it would right. be. Uh, what What do you think, Christian? You know a lot about a lot more about that than I do. If you had to put this on an internet year, where do you think we are? Yeah, maybe maybe the, about 1990. I I, I think. Yeah, that's right. I, I was kind of thinking the same thing. 
Yeah. Yeah. And I, I miss that, you know, I was born in 84, so I, I wasn't old right. enough to enjoy that experience. So it is, it is really nice to be a part of this. Yeah. Right. Now, um, here, the, you said you, you, you had, you know, you're a fan of privacy and you're a libertarian. So my, my sense was, so one way to push your views, you said you don't like pushing them. Uh, you get into politics and try to change the world that way. But it seems to me that with blockchains, you can uh, advance uh, your, your political views without having, if, if politics isn't your thing, you can do it that way, which is kind of fascinating that geeks. Yeah. Can, uh, so, yeah. No, it's um very interesting space. And there's still, I mean, if, if you're doing this uh, cryptoholic show, this could end up being as the space grows, you know, a, a ginormous show. You, you never know. <laughs> right. So, it's, it's cool. Cause it's giving us all this, like, it's given us this opportunity here. Right. Like I would, I would have never started a podcast or anything if I wasn't involved in this industry. Mm -hmm. Right. And no, here I, I am. Exactly. <laughs> Yeah. So um, I also wanted to talk a little bit about, uh, uh, I mean, I know, I know you're just kind of just starting to part ways with them, but you do have a lot of experience with them. And um, you more than anybody would know some of the pros and cons of that Dash governance treasury model. And this is something that a lot of people in the Ethereum Classic community are interested in is among, among other different governance and treasury models that people are talking about and looking into and decentralized governance. So if you could uh, tell us a little bit about kind of what's going on with that and maybe if you know from personal experience some of the, the positives, some of the negatives, and maybe even some negatives that you know about that you have suggestions for. And, you know, we can talk about that and kind of incorporate that into some of our own proposals later on in the future potentially. Yeah. Uh, so I was involved with uh, getting a couple proposals passed. Uh, the first one I was involved with, it was called the Dash World Evolution. And it was a marketing proposal. And there's this community member who came in and he basically, uh, he wanted to do marketing for Dash. And oh, he did a really... I was going to say, um, if, you could, um, if you could tell some of the listeners out there that might not know, um, just give them a brief rundown of the Dash model as far as like the super nodes and the proposals. Right. Just uh, kind of briefly so that everybody listening out there, um, when we get into it, they'll know what you mean by the proposals and the voting percentages and stuff like that. Yep. Okay, so anybody can uh, submit a proposal to the, the, Dash, uh, the Dash budget system. And for example, uh, everyone knows Amanda B. Johnson. She submitted a proposal to do a show. And that's just an example. Mm -hmm. And it passed, and she's getting paid to do her Dash detailed show right now. So uh, basically, you you submit some commands in the command line, or you can. Uh, there's a website you can go to to submit a proposal. It's called uh -huh. Dash Central, I think. Okay. And, uh, they they help you lay it out. So you submit your proposal to the network, and uh, it it goes to the network. And the master nodes. There's a few tools for master node owners. Uh, master nodes are basically regular nodes. Um, uh -huh. like in, in Bitcoin, but uh, you have to have a collateral of 1,000 Dash. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you are a master node, then you're, you're allowed to vote on budget proposals. So Amanda comes in, submits her proposal to the network, and anybody who owns 1,000 Dash and is running a master node can vote yes or no on that proposal. Or I they see. Don't have so to vote so it's all. someone that has like a real stake in the, the currency or the blockchain that's able to determine the blockchain's future. You can't just um, vote, you know, on whatever you want if you have, like, one dash because you don't have as, enough stake to, to determine the future of the blockchains, essentially. Is that right? Exactly. So you, the, the minimum is 1,000 dash. So it's basically 1,000 dash per vote. So you, you, you pretty much get people who really look into the different proposals and I'm sure do a lot of due diligence as far as um, what, what's going to be pushed forward. Not necessarily well, that you don't have problems, but you would probably have less problems than if just everyone could vote. I imagine anyway. Uh, less problems because there's probably less manipulation possibly, but mm -hmm. there's more problems I feel because, you know, those master node owners, a lot of them honestly just don't care. They just don't care. 
And I, really? I, I did everything I could in my power. You know, I, I was doing podcasts uh, at the time when the, the budget system first came out. And uh-huh. I, was inter- I was interviewing uh, proposers, you know, people who were submitting proposals. I was interviewing them about their proposals and uh, publishing these interviews so the master node owners could get more right. information in other ways. You know, I was writing PDFs and just trying to get people to vote. But if you go look at like the voting totals on a lot of these proposals that are up there, like uh-huh. the voting, the voting percentage is very, very low. <laughs> right. And that was well, one of the biggest issues that I saw. It's funny you mentioned that because I, I read the IOHK breakdown and that was one of the uh, conclusions in there as a, uh, one of the critiques was about the lack of incentive for master node participation. Right. So uh, you know, you noticed that well as well, I guess. So that's well, one that's of the issues. Good. One of the mm-hmm. issues with that too was that you know there's a there's three whales that I know of in Dash and uh, whales as in I I know for sure that Evan Duffield owned over 400 master nodes. I know for sure there's another whale, and I'm not going to mention his name, uh, but he owned over 600 master nodes. Wow. And then I know that there was his buddy. Uh, that the guy that owned 600, I know he had a buddy who owned like 500 master nodes. And the thing is, is that these guys would also, they would never vote. You know, mm. Evan wouldn't vote. Uh, the 600 wow. and the 500 guy wouldn't vote. So that's what, like 1600 master nodes out of 30 something hundred huh. <clears throat> that never voted. <laughs> I see. So I think that having big whales in this type of system, mm-hmm. it's bad for two reasons because a they can sway votes and b Mm -hmm. they can not just not vote and it just it makes it look like nobody really cares i see do you have any suggestions or or um thoughts on maybe how that can be approved upon for you know the etc community that's listening out there and might pick up uh this discussion where we leave off (laughs) so uh myself and uh, a couple partners of mine when we had the slack the Slack room, the Dash Slack. Yes. We actually submit. We actually submitted our own proposal to uh, to pay some of our volunteers to create community initiatives uh, to um, fund the tip bot. We had a tip bot and uh, a Dash tip bot. Right. And <clears throat> so the reason I bring that up though is because I told you Evan, uh, the lead developer for Dash. He, he like never voted on proposals. Um, right. He voted on our proposal and he voted no with 500 <laughs> master notes. <laughs> and uh, I was surprised. I was like, are you like, really, man? Like, you, do you not appreciate community initiatives? Like what's going on here, man? And so then the other guy, the other whale voted yes. <laughs> Boom. So <laughs> if, if you go look at this proposal, the Slack proposal, we actually had more voter turnout than probably 90% of the proposals on there. And the, the way that I did that was vocalizing it. You know, if yeah. you're a person who submits a proposal, you got to get your ass out there and in every way, any way possible, just it's try like, to get uh, the information to it's, the community. It's, it's like the blockchain version of knocking on doors. <laughs> That's funny. It's crazy, you know, we got we got funded for two months. The proposal was set for three months, right? We we set it for three months. We got funded for two months. And the third month, it gets crazy. Like uh budgets pass on the sixth of each month or so, around the sixth. So towards the end of the month, like end of each month, it starts getting crazy in the chat rooms on the forums people are yelling at each other like <laughs> arguing no you're like just crazy my proposal's better yours sucks you know and dude for like for four or five days up until the last uh, month of funding for our dash propo- or our slack proposal we were like in in combat mode just trying yeah. to rally votes man we went know, from like were- I don't know if you've ever seen the the funny videos of like uh, crazy parliament when when they're really yelling at each other from maybe Australia <laughs> or England, you know, or something. It's not it's not like the the American Congress or something, you know. They're jumping over the bar the barriers, you know, swinging at each other and stuff. That's how it is, man. It's I swear. And 
you know, like you, you, everyone's posturing, like, no, like this proposal, this proposal. So ultimately uh, it sucks because ultimately we got defunded. And the reason we were uh, defunded was because uh, Ryan Taylor, the, he's like in charge of finances over at Dash. He, right. he took control of one of the whales um, master nodes. The, the whale gave him control of the master nodes and oh, Ryan okay. Taylor upvoted this proposal uh, called legal and they were getting legal advice from these attorneys. And then he downvoted our proposal and he, he knocked us out. And that's one of the issues with uh, whales having too many votes, you know, like it's, is right. that really a decentralized voting system right there? You know, mm -hmm. when that's one guy can sway the entire thing. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. I see what you're saying. Uh, can I ask a question? I have a yeah. question. Bill. So um, you've mentioned some of the issues uh, with what you got going right now, distributing the funds, but I'm curious if you have any thoughts, if uh, this process or a related process would work with something even uh, more touchy like, uh, protocol changes. If you're, you probably know about the the debate on changing the block size in Bitcoin land and the the split that happened in with Ethereum and Ethereum Classic. Have you guys used this or a similar model to debate, discuss uh, sensitive issues right. like like hard forks, things like that? So, in fact, we did, and I I I think this was just for some PR buzz, you know. But when the whole block uh, size debate in Bitcoin was going on, Dash actually voted to increase our block size from whatever, one, one whatever megabyte to two megabytes or whatever. <laughs> yeah. And we, it passed with flying colors. And that, that one got a lot of voters too. It passed. But then the question comes like, how, how do you force a developer <laughs> to implement something? Uh -huh. Right. You, you can't. Like I can't say, okay, you know, let's say Evan voted no on that proposal. I don't know if he did or not, but let's say he did vote no on that proposal, but the proposal ended up passing, you know, can, can the community, can the master node, node owners, like, we can't hold him hostage until he implements that change, right? He could just quit. He could just be like, screw you guys, I'm out of here. Yeah. So how, how can you, so the funding's there, the funding model is there, mm -hmm. but the governance is not there. It's not. Yeah, I yeah I see this as a, a real uh, big open problem probably for a while. How to in a decentralized system how to to deal with these really controversial uh, decisions that have to be made. And I don't know if anybody has the perfect answer yet how to how to do that. Yeah, I don't I don't have a solution. <laughs> well, um, as far as the uh, uh, the proposals and the incentive to vote. Did you have any, uh, you know, thoughts while you were there or suggestions on, you know, maybe different incentive policies to, to get the master nodes more involved or maybe more of the regular nodes to balance out the master nodes potentially? Because you said it wasn't just the uh, big whales that weren't voting. You said it was across the board that you were getting low voter turnout, correct? Yeah. So I think there's possibly two solutions that I've thought of and I don't know if they could work or they can work or can't work, but it's either uh, you can penalize, you can penalize the master node owners for not voting, or you can reward the master node owners for voting, mm -hmm. right? So yeah. let's say you're a master node owner and you skip on three proposals. Let's say you don't vote on three different, the three latest proposals. Well, then let's say if that happens and you'll miss one of your master node rewards or you'll, you'll be dropped off the list or you'll be moved to the end of the reward line. Right. Yeah. And, but people don't really agree that we, we master node owners should be penalized for not participating. Right. So the, the flip side is like, let's say uh, you are a master node and you are participating then maybe there can be some kind of extra incentive for those who are participating well one thing i was thinking about was maybe uh, a, a flat bounty for a proposal you voted for um actually winning and and you would maybe everyone that voted could chop the reward i don't know That's if that would idea. be feasible or possible because well, actually it would oh go ahead 
Well, right now, when you submit a proposal, it's it costs five dash, right? Uh -huh. So that five dash is just, it's burned. It, it goes into some dark wallet or whatever. I don't know where it goes. It's burned or something. So you could use that as the, as the, what you were just saying. Yeah. You know? I think you would, you would, the thing is if you say had, you know, a thousand people, you know, potentially looking into the future, if you had a thousand people voting on something, a five cent reward, you know, a soda <laughs> can might not really bring anybody. Uh, exactly. <laughs> so, um, you know, there could be, some sort of treasury system set up where there are funds pre you know allocated or set aside for specific proposals for when they're submitted and the bounty is put there to as a collection or something like that and then if it doesn't go through then it's returned back to the treasury or you know something like that is crossed my mind um because it, it would even work you know my first thought was oh well then what if everyone just voted for the top the top one just to get the reward and win, but then really you've got, say, how would it work with the proposals? There's usually two or three that win, correct? Uh, so there's there's like a specific amount of allocated dash per month. Right. So it all really depends on how much the proposal is asking for. You know? I see. So if there's 7,000 dash per month and there's a huge, like there's the core team is uh, receiving 2,100 dash per month for the core budget. So there's, uh -huh. If it's seven thousand, that's five thousand left remaining, uh -huh. you know. And then the the Dash core team, they say they they want to take eighty percent or something each month. Eighty percent, they say that they're going to go for, and they'll leave the other twenty percent to to the community. I see. So it would be it would be hard to determine which uh -huh. one is better, or like. Like I see. Going to pay more if there's an incentive, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I was thinking it'd probably be a flat, and then even if there was one, a, say a second proposal that nobody was really voting on, it would drive incentive to vote either negative or for it because uh, you'd be chopping it with less people if everybody piled into the one uh, to the one proposal. Now, there's there's multiple votes, I guess, right, and multiple down votes. Is that correct? For each as master master master. Master. As master node, or they get to vote on one thing. Is that right? No, you can vote on every proposal once. Every proposal once. And, okay. Well, you you can change your vote too. Like you, if you vote yes, you can change it to no. It it doesn't stand. You know. Mm -hmm. I yeah, see. So, but you can only vote on a proposal with one vote. Is what I'm saying. Okay, got gotcha. you. Uh, can I make uh, a comment? Yeah, go ahead. Sure. So I just I like to when I see something. Uh, positive, I like to 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 call it out. So we we all agree there's no perfect uh, uh, method to to for the decentralized communities to work out these uh, these issues. No perfect voting system, but I have to hand it to the Dash community. Having having any voting system is is a lot better than having no voting system. There was a uh, when the the uh, DAO attack was happening and and. Uh, people were trying to decide what to do you may have heard there was a, a system called the carbon vote that was hastily thrown together and, and there was no infrastructure in place to, to do a proper vote and so just uh, you know what i'm saying having having anything in place at least gives you something that you could use to to, to communicate in in some structured manner so that's i commend them for for having that and, and trying to attack that problem Right. And it works too, actually. Like I've used this whole, I've submitted my own proposal. I'll tell you guys about that in a second. And I've voted on proposals and it, it works. You know, I've sat here and watched people get paid for doing work that they've proposed that they would do, you know, <laughs> it, it's awesome. Very cool. I, yeah, I totally I agree with you. Yeah. And I imagine if there was a crisis that or some decision that had to be made really fast, Everybody would would uh, they would use the existing right this the voting mechanisms you have in place and do a special vote or something, but it would be a lot easier than trying to throw a new system together to do it. Right. Yeah. And well, uh, what was the proposal you 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 were talking? You were just about to tell us about. So uh, just this is I, I'm not trying to say that the whole dash budget system is bad or anything, or I'm not trying to highlight these negative aspects of it. No, no, but we're it's um, not. We're, it's not perfect, you know. No, it's cool. We're we're here to talk about, um, you know, the the pros are pros, but 
really talking about the negatives and trying to figure out what we can do moving forward and how we can build on it is kind of what um, this this interview and the show is is really uh, the most important aspect of it. So I'm I'm all about it. Let's go. Right. So there there's two there's two three proposals that were very questionable in my eyes over the last uh, oh. since the budget system was released. And the first one, uh, I'll just review these real fast. The first one was uh, the Dash website, dash.org website. <laughs> and basically they asked for 2,000 Dash at the time. And I think it came out to like $5,000 uh, total for the price of Dash at the time. And uh, they were going to use that money to develop a new website, right, for Dash. Right. Gotcha. And, this was in October of 2015 that this proposal was passed, I believe. October, yeah, October 2015 is when this proposal passed. I see. And the website is still not done <laughs> to this day. Literally, they, they have not developed the new website to this day. And we don't know if they converted that dash into fiat cash or if they held on to that dash, right? So if they wow. converted it into fiat, then they would have $5,000 in their pocket still, because they haven't used any of the money, right? I mean, right. where's the website? If they didn't convert it into fiat, then at the price of dash right now, they've got around $20,000 for yep. a website that they were supposed to build and cool. that they haven't built. And so where's that money? You know, cool. that, that was one of my questions was where's that money? <laughs> who who was it that proposed proposed to build the website? Were these unknowns, or were they just no. online personalities? Or so these are these are some core core team members. Uh, Daniel Diaz is one of the core team members. He's the he's business relations and Dash, and he was doing quite a few uh, proposals before Ryan Taylor came along. And I believe the website proposal was done by Evan, and Evan was doing a bunch of proposals because. Uh, if Evan submitted a proposal is basically an instant yes vote from all the master nodes, you know? Mm -hmm. So, and at the time when he submitted the website proposal, I was all for it. I was like, yeah, let's do it. Let's build a new website. 5,000. Here you go. Take it. But yeah. the issue I'm highlighting here is that it's that we come back to that. How do you force people to do work that they promised that they were going to do? And then what are the, what are the repercussions you know, what, what are the, what can you do about it if they don't do that work? <laughs> Not much you can do about it really, except for cry and complain on the forums and chat rooms. Right. <laughs> could there yeah. be something like, could there be something like they, the, the person who promised to do the work, then the dash or the, the crypto is then moved to an escrow account that moves after certain milestones or something like that, rather than they just get all the funds at once. I'm sure that they could set something up like that, but it, at that time it was all way too new to even yeah, start right. thinking about that. Um, I got you. Another questionable proposal is the Lamassu ATM. So they, they highlighted, they, they submitted this proposal and in like the title and everything, they're like Lamassu ATM, like integration and all this stuff. But if you read the fine print of this proposal, it ended up that Lamassu had nothing to do with this proposal whatsoever. They weren't involved, <laughs> nothing. It was some third party crappy ATM reseller, Lamassu ATM reseller based out of Panama. And uh, <clears throat> yeah, this was like, this was, this proposal was pushed adamantly by the core team too. And they were all about it. And <laughs> I wrote a crazy long PDF about this thing and like tried to expose like, I'm not calling it a scam, but it was pretty scammy in my opinion, you know, like, yeah. and the thing is, is that even after I wrote this PDF and exposed this somewhat questionable Lamassu proposal, no, hardly any of the master nodes even, even cared. They just didn't care. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, the, so does that, there was one more. Is there way? Oh, does that mean that the master nodes uh, we should start being suspicious of their virtue then? If if, uh, if or they're just lazy. Okay. You know? <laughs> okay. Possibly, maybe maybe they got paid from it. I don't. Maybe they're part of it. I don't know. You know, I, I can only speculate at this point. But the fact of the matter is that 
they they basically misled the master node owners with these titles and you know mm-hmm. they, they even put the Lambasu like logo right at the very top of this proposal like on the forums mm-hmm. <laughs> so yeah. anyone that didn't read this proposal and just looked at the headlines oh Lambasu yeah let's we're gonna integrate with Lambasu awesome let's do it and literally that's what everyone thought too they thought Dash was integrating with Lamasu. If you Google Dash Lamasu, there's like article. There's articles written about it. Like, oh, Dash integrating with Lamasu. It's like, okay. no, they weren't though. <laughs> what um, what what else do we have to watch out for? What else do you think we can improve upon, or should we improve upon? You think? So just straight up scammers. Like you have this system where people can submit proposal. Random anonymous people can submit proposals, and uh-huh. <clears throat> there was this proposal called Dart payments right dart and daniel uh diaz dash business relations guy yeah he he, uh backed this proposal he didn't submit it but he backed these guys and he vouched for these vouched for these guys submitting this proposal right and so if you read these guys proposal let, let me just give you the quick intro they said to drive adoption of Dash, one of the important pieces of infrastructure required is a high-quality Dash-exclusive payment gateway with instant fiat conversion. BitPay and Coinbase have been instrumental in encouraging merchants to add Bitcoin as payment options on their sites, introducing Dart payments. And then they go into their whole proposal about what they want, how much Dash they want, yada, yada, yada. And this this whole thing ends up being a scam. You know? Oh, my God. And these guys were... Va- these guys were vouched for by the Dash core community team. Yeah. You know? And it ends up being a scam. These, these guys disappear. They don't do anything. They, their website's like gone. Uh, anybody that option to like purchase these Dart stickers. Yeah. And <laughs> the stickers like never got sent out. People like sent them Dash, never got stickers. And so you know what? Uh, what I did what I did after this proposal, uh, it passed. It, they got funding for one month, literally. It passed, and it ended up being a scam. So I wanted to show the Dash community how, s- not stupid, but like you guys need to just think yeah. more before you just click a button that says yes, right? Dude, so dude, I, dude. I submitted. I submitted my own proposal, and it was based off the Dart payment proposal and i called it unicorn rainbow ass and let me let me give you my intro real fast right so it says to make dash people feel great one of the important pieces of apple pie is a high quality data retention payments through gateways with instant rotten cherries bitpay and coinbase have been instrumental in encouraging the insect colonies to add bitcoin as an appetizer at denny's but we think it would be better if they add dash because it tastes much better Right, so it was basically a parody of this Dart payments proposal, and I submitted it. And my reasoning behind this was like, idiots, you just passed yeah. this scammy proposal. Like, well, you're, you were you were you were calling attention to something through uh, satire, you know? So yeah, I, yeah I like it. exactly. And everyone loved it. You can Google that if you Google a uh, unicorn rainbow ass. Dash so talk. Funny. You can read. <laughs> you can read the whole proposal, <laughs> and I stayed well, silent about it for for a few weeks. And I'm wondering um, if kinda. the a solution might be something along the lines of a reputation system, like eBay has. That's true. What do you for think? the master node owners, or for people submitting proposals, for to deal with with scammers. Maybe both. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. Um, I guess you have to have a certain amount of points before you can submit a proposal or something. Maybe. That's an interesting idea. Um, also, I was thinking, you know, I kind of, not I, but, you know, the ETC community kind of goes through this as well. Uh, and it's just people that submit things on or post things and promote things. I always ask, you know, like, who are you? Where did you, you know, where did where'd you go to school? Where did you go to college? What's your Twitter account? Where's your LinkedIn? And, People, you know, tend to point out that, oh, that doesn't matter because I could just make that. Well, yeah, you can, but it's an extra piece of information that helps me figure out, you know, who you are and where you came from. And I can even use your LinkedIn to track down your sources and ask different colleagues and this and that. And it's just. Right. Um, and even, if, even if it is a, f- a fake identity, you're still putting the work into. 
yeah, you know, yeah. I, using I, that I, fake identity. So as as long as I can, you know, obviously. Um, a blockchain or a community gets to a point where there's so many projects going on that it's impossible to to keep track of them all. But as long as we are still, uh, you know, kind of building and building our foundation, if I can do everything that I can to look into these projects and look into every single person that's on the website from, you know, what they say they did to their contacts and their contacts contacts, I trace everything that I can to try to find any holes. Um, so, I think that's yeah. always and these guys yeah they 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 even said in their proposal they're like oh we want to stay anonymous uh we don't want anyone to know who we are we're two brothers from now I, I, New for Zealand me, or something for, for me for stuff like this anonymous is a pretty big red flag um obviously yeah. it's different <laughs> that's what i was saying I, yeah obviously if it's it's different if it's like a very sensitive you know if they're proposing you know silk road something whatever but if it's a very innocuous uh, project the, the the anonymous part just is a real red flag to me. And the less open a team seems to be about reaching out to the community or about building, uh, you know, a reputation within the community. If, you know, if they come out and just say, Oh, we're launching and, and they really don't have any relationship. It's tough. You know, crypto has, has been somewhat jaded. Uh, to all this stuff, and they're pretty skeptical. So um, I'm glad yeah. everybody, for the most part, does their due diligence, but certain bad things still happen. You know how it is. I mean, that red flag in this dark proposal, like, anybody should have saw that. Like, and But we, they still passed it, you know? Like, my yeah. response to them saying, we want to be anonymous is like, hey, you guys want to come on my podcast and actually tell everybody who you are? Huh. <laughs> and they're like, no, no, sorry, we're, we're not going to do that. You know? Now, uh, let me just, can I make a comment? So um, now you don't have to give up privacy to have reputation. So it, it, it's That's not, true. So you could have both. You could have, right, you could sign all your documents with a private key and that, that you could only send good stuff and then people would know that if something is signed with that private key, it's, it's probably credible. And so that, that is possible, but um, it would take a lot of work. You'd have to do a lot of stuff to develop that reputation and keep your privacy, but it is possible. Yeah, yeah, it's right. possible. Um, but as far as um, projects that are saying, hey, we want to do this for you guys. Give us some money. I want to know, like, who you are, man. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, you, got, you got one post under your username right here, man. <laughs> like, 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 yes, you could still disappear with the money, but I at least want to be able to harass your email address or something. I, I don't know. Well, no, hold on. Well, <laughs> stop, 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 stop. Let me give you an example. Like, suppose, yeah. suppose somebody said, hi, I'm Satoshi, and I can prove it, and I want you to give me money to make an even better cryptocurrency system, right? Obviously, he has enough of a reputation. You would trust him without needing to know his real identity. Right. Right. So that, that was my point. Well, uh, yeah, I, I guess I know what you mean. Uh, you mean in reference to a PGP key and then if, yeah, but how would you know it's the real Satoshi? I mean, I, I don't know. I, I know what you're saying, though, and it's definitely something I would love to implement. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, you know, there's, there's all sorts of stuff like that. So, um, right. you know, I, I, I think, uh, you know, we've talked about a lot, Bill, and uh, love having you on. Are there any questions you, you have for us, maybe, or anything you want to discuss? Or? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> Christian, do you have any other questions for, for Bill or anything like that? No, no. I'm just uh, thankful that he, he opened my eyes to uh, an existing governance model that was tried. He's given me a lot to think about, and I hope lots of other people will listen to this conversation and be thinking about this hard problem because uh, it's going to be one that's going to be ongoing that we need to solve. Yeah, definitely. I think this should start, you know, or spark a, a lot of great discussion uh, amongst the community and maybe not even just the ETC community or Dash community, you know, blockchain community in general, because yeah. this is uh, an important aspect of, of a lot of these blockchains going forward, I think. So, um, Bill, uh, great to have you on, and I'm sure this won't be the last time we'll have you on the show. And yes, thank looking you. forward to speaking with you in the future, working on stuff, you know? Yeah, for sure. It's been great, guys. I, I really appreciate you having me on. Hey. Yeah, absolutely. Let uh, let us know if you ever need anything or, you know, whatever it is. We got you. Yeah, we'll be in touch for sure. Thank you.
Absolutely. Take care.